What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm looking a little cray cray right now. I have no makeup on because in this video, I'm gonna be doing a full tutorial using only drugstore makeup. Some of these are gonna be a first impression. Some of them are things that I'm already using right now that I incorporate into my everyday routine. But it was really important to me that I did a tutorial using only drugstore makeup because your girl might not be able to afford high-end makeup. Back in the day, I would save all my money to go to Sephora or Ulta and buy like a $30 lip gloss, something absolutely absurd like that. I'm fortunate enough now that I can't afford things like that, I am guilty of using a lot of high-end makeup. So I want this channel to be more well-rounded. I want people to have options. You know, maybe you can't afford to go to Sephora, maybe you can't afford to go to Ulta, maybe you can't afford high-end makeup. So in this video, I'm gonna be using all drugstore. Some of these things I am already using today that I know I already love, things that I use on an everyday regular basis. I'm actually going for something a little more effortless. Um, I don't really want to do anything too heavy or too glamorous like I usually tend to go for. I'm just going to do something kind of natural with a wing liner and lashes, of course, because what is a makeup look without lashes? I always start with eyes first when I'm doing something a little heavier, but since I'm not doing that today, I'm going to start with face. For my primer, this is something that's new to me that I've never tried before. This is the Master Prime by Maybelline, and this one is the Blur and Smooth. This is supposed to be good for pores and oily skin, which is what I struggle with. I don't really have issues with anything with my skin other than I have really big pores in this area, and I am super, super oily in my T-zone. If I don't use the right things, my makeup slides right off my face, and I have to blot and repowder every single day, no matter how matte the foundation is, how matte the primer, powder, whatever. I am going to be blotting and repowdering because that's just what I'm working with. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting more silicone-y, and this looks kind of like a moisturizer, so that's different. I'm just going to tap this on my T-zone because this is where I get oily and I am super high maintenance and what I'm going to do next is take this. This is the Angel Veil by NYX. I use this almost every day. I already know I love this primer. It's one of my favorites. It is a little more up there in price for drugstore. I think this retails for about 16 I want to say it's like 16 or $17. It's it's pretty close to $20, which is up there for a drugstore primer. This primer does a really good job of keeping your makeup in place. It does have a sheen to it. It does make your skin look a little more luminous. So that's why I only use it on the outer parts of my face because I want the center of my face to stay super matte. I don't want any oils to peek through. But because my skin is normal on the outer portion up here above my forehead and on my cheeks and my chin, I really don't get oily there. I'm okay with having something a little more luminous on the outer perimeters of my face. So that's why I only use this in that area. And this is the CoverGirl Healthy Elixir Foundation and I am in the shade Buff Beige. This is so freaking bomb, y'all. I'm just gonna take my beauty blender. I didn't really stick to the drugstore theme with tools. Um, I'm picky with my brushes. What I'm using right now is stuff that I really like. And honestly, I just haven't had a lot of luck in the drugstore department when it comes to tools. This is going to be strictly makeup that I'm doing all drugstore. That's why I'm using my Beauty Blender. I, I want to try the L'Oreal sponge. I heard that's really good. That's going to be next on my list. I just keep forgetting to pick it up when I'm at the store. I have tried the Real Technique sponge. That one's okay. I don't have anything against it. Um, I just love the Beauty Blender. I just feel like nothing can replace it. And this foundation is truly so beautiful. Healthy Elixir kind of sounds like it's going to be something more luminous, maybe more dewy, and I was hesitant to, to try it. And I'm really particular with my foundations. So I ended up getting it anyways. I saw it. I wanted say I think I saw it in Casey Holmes video and she's also very oily when she recommends something for the skin I almost always like it because we have similar skin types it looks so natural and it honestly just looks like skin it's super affordable which you can't beat I want to say it was around nine nine or ten dollars it lasts all day long Okay, next, this is my new obsession. I love this stuff. This is the Maybelline Master Conceal Concealer, and this honestly reminds me of the Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the shade Light, and this stuff is so bomb, you guys. I absolutely am obsessed with it. I have actually been reaching for this more than I reach for my Tarte Shape Tape. Sometimes I just want to save the Shape Tape for 
more of a special occasion or maybe more when I'm doing something more heavy and glamorous just because it is super full coverage and it is more expensive. It's, I think it's like $25 or $26. So that's almost $30 for a concealer. And when you go through concealer as much as I do, you need a backup that's a little more inexpensive okay it honestly looks so beautiful on the skin it blends in so nicely and i don't feel like i need a corrector with this only thing i wish is that it had a different type of applicator i don't like to blend in product with my finger that's just me being a princess i like to use my sponge i just wish that it had more of like a brush applicator but nonetheless, this stuff is still awesome. I don't know what took me so long to jump on the bandwagon, but I'm so glad I did. And it's, I think around $7. I love this to set my under eyes. I have the other one with the really deep contour and the more yellow tone powder. It's this one right here. I also have this one. This one is in Caramel Toffee. The contour is, it's a little too warm for me. It doesn't work for my skin tone, even when I'm tan. I love the setting powder for when I have color in my skin. It just looks so pretty and it blends beautifully. I'm just going to tap out the creases of my concealer like I always do. For the rest of my face, I'm going to use the Cody Airspun Translucent Powder. I have used this in the past and I don't know what happened to it. I thought I had it, but I don't. And I actually stopped using it because I actually got the wrong color. I thought that they were all translucent and they are not. There are colors in these. And so me being the ding dong that I am, didn't even check that. And I got like this really like beigey color. It didn't work for me. So I guess I got rid of it. I don't remember because I can't seem to find it anywhere. But this one that I have right here is in the color translucent and it's the extra coverage one. And I did really like this. Even though it wasn't my color, your girl still used it. I made it work like I always do. So I guess it wasn't something that I could use on an everyday basis since it was too dark for my pale little skin. So I actually got the right color this time and I prefer a translucent powder over a pressed powder. When you have a full coverage foundation, you don't want to put too much of a full coverage powder on top of it because then your face is going to look cakey and you're going to look like a big old cake face. And that is never flattering. Even though we're putting on a hundred pounds of makeup, we still want it to look somewhat natural. I'm going to use this to bake underneath my eyes because I have creasy wrinkles. This is what I'm working with and this is what I do to prevent creasing. This smells so freaking bomb. Oh my god, it smells like vacation. This is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I have been trying to get my sticky little fingers on this forever since it came out and I have not been able to find it. But Walmart came through for me today and they had this in stock and the people were not lying. This literally smells like a paradise vacation. I wish I was in like Mexico or something because this is what it's reminding me of. And look at that bronze. Yes, girl. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. So I'm just using this with a big fluffy powder brush. I'm going to go in and contour, but I like to bronze the outside of my face on top of contouring because I am extra. Um, that's just how I like to do. So I like to take this step. I'm going to take this onto my chest so we all blend together and I don't have just an orange face and a pale ass chest. Yes. To contour, this is also something that is semi-new to me. I've only used it maybe once or twice, and I do like it so far. This is the e.l.f. Blush Bronzer Duo, and this is in the shade Fiji. The blush is a little too dark for me. I feel like I say that after, like, every single product. This is hurricane season right now in Houston, so it's been, like, really ugly and rainy and stormy, but give me some time. I will get some color in the skin. The blush is really pretty. You can use it for fair skin if you use it with a really light hand. I just don't have time for that. Honestly, I'm not that patient. I do love the contour side. It does add a really, really beautiful shadow to the skin. It's nothing too deep, nothing too orangey. You already know Elf is super affordable. I'm pretty sure this was under $5. I want to say it was around the $3 mark. And I absolutely love this. 
This powder is so lightweight. I forgot that I had baked underneath my eyes. I was just gonna be walking around looking like a crazy person. Okay, now for blush. I'm going to be taking the NYX blush. This one is all dingy and beat up because I've had it for a really long time. The lid is also broken, so as you can tell, it is very well loved. This is in the color Terracotta. This is kind of like a bronzy terracotta shade. I mean, that's honestly the only way I can describe it, and I absolutely love it. I have had this forever, and these are by far my favorite drugstore blushes. The NYX ones in this packaging. Um, I know they have other types of blushes, but the one in this black packaging with that kind of like, it has kind of like a textured top. These are my absolute favorite. I think they are around $5. They last all day and they look absolutely beautiful. A little bit does go a very long way. So you don't need a lot of this. You just kind of want to gently dab your brush in there and then absolutely make sure to tap off the excess because this is pigmented. All I'm going to do is blend out all the product I have on my face. I want everything to mesh together nice and seamlessly. My next obsession is the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter. This is in the color Molten Gold. I used this for the first time in my cool tone smoky eye video i did like two videos ago i think if you watch that video this like literally blew my mind i almost threw up when i put this on my face no lie i have not put this down since i got it i can't remember the last time that i used any of my other like high-end highlighters i have like a love-hate relationship with drugstore highlighters because i try a lot of them you know i'm always looking for the next best thing i'm never satisfied of course as a true junkie. I'm never happy. I am obsessed with this. This highlighter was, I believe, around the $7 mark. For brows, I'm taking the Lock On Liner and Brow Cream. This is by e.l.f. and this is in the color Medium Brown. It takes a lot to impress me when it comes to brow pomade. I'm so used to the Anastasia one and that one is so good. I've been using it since it came out and it's the only thing that I've used. I've never even ventured out and tried other ones just because I'm honestly not interested. I think I tried the MAC one once and I absolutely hated it. I used it like two times and I gave it to my sister and honestly I felt like that's what I deserve for betraying the dip brow. I literally feel like nothing can replace it. Nothing even comes close to dip brow. We're gonna test this little guy out. This is like super creamy. I did look up reviews and it has really good reviews and this was only $3 so you can't beat the price point but it has to perform well. Does anybody else hate doing brows as much as I do? Like, of all the things I do on my face, I absolutely hate doing my brows. I'm almost 100% sure I don't like this. I don't like them. Oh. Okay, I will say the color is good. I like the color. Um, their coloring is a little off because this says it's supposed to be medium brown. If I hadn't already done my research on this product, I probably would have gotten the darker brown and the dark brown is more of like a blackish color. That would have been way too dark for me. They only have four colors, I believe, so it doesn't have a really good color selection. I don't know. I just don't like it. It's very creamy in the pot. I feel like it dries too fast, like you don't have enough time to work with it. They look a little messy. Like it's too creamy that it kind of smudges. It's kind of how it looks. Like they don't look as precise as they do when I use the dip brow. Because with the dip brow, once it's on, it's on. And it's not going anywhere. It doesn't smudge. I can go to the gym and do like an hour of cardio. And my face will be melting off, but my brows will still be in perfect shape. It is harder for me to do my brows on camera, like with a little mirror like this. So I'm going to try it again off camera and get up in my mirror because I have to be really close to my mirror. Maybe I just wasn't moving fast enough. I don't know. Uh, first impression, I don't really care for it. Even though I brush it out with a spoolie, I feel like there's a lot of like sparseness. I'm going to take the L'Oreal Brow Gel. This is the Brow Stylist Plumber and this is just in clear. There's no color to this and 
I actually don't really use a brow gel. I don't really feel like I need one because the Dip Brow does such a good job of keeping my brow hairs in place. Um, truly, I don't know why I bought this. Um, I have absolutely no purpose for it. I'm using a new brow product. I don't know how it performs, so I'm going to use this brow gel just on top of it to keep from smudging or smearing since I don't know how this works anyways and I don't want to take any chances of my brows smudging. Now moving on to eyes, I'm going to take the Maybelline Color Tattoo, and this is in the shade Bad to the Bronze. It's just this really pretty bronzy color. I'm kind of going for like this effortless, easy, kind of like one swipe of eyeshadow and a wing look today. I have used the Color Tattoo a long, long time ago, and I don't remember what happened, why I never repurchased it. I do remember that I didn't like it solely because it dried out way too fast, and I ended up throwing it away. Now, I don't really gravitate towards cream products just because I'm really oily. Sometimes it's just nice to have like a one swipe and go kind of thing. I just haven't found that perfect product for me that lasts on my oily lids. And this is pretty creamy, so I don't know how it's going to work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take kind of a bronzy eyeshadow. I'm just going to pat that on top just to kind of set it in place so it doesn't move. If you like that natural kind of sheen, these are okay. I would give them a go. They were only around $5. I know people rave about them. I just remember it drying out so quickly that I ended up throwing it away, so I never repurchased them. I have tried a couple of colors. I did like them. I like them as a base to powder, but um, this is just an extra step I don't want to do. I'm going to take this shadow. This is a glitter top coat from Ulta and I actually got it when it was on clearance. This was originally $7, and I don't remember what I paid for it, but this is in the color Bronze Bombshell. Don't want to take any chances of this cream creasing or fading, so I'm just going to take a little tiny bit and dab it just on top. I'm not even really going for anything super pigmented. That's why I'm okay with the color tattoo not being super opaque, because I'm just kind of going for something super simple today. going to take a fluffy brush. This has absolutely no product on it. Even though I'm not going in with a transition, I still don't want just like this harsh line of bronze. I'm just going to soften the edges out and, and diffuse the color just so we still look put together. That's actually really pretty. I'm liking that a lot. I'm going to take the Maybelline Eye Studio Give Me Gold palette. This is one of my favorite, favorite eyeshadow palettes. The colors are so pretty and creamy. I'm going to take this first one in the palette. It's this really pretty goldish champagne color, and I'm going to use this as an inner corner highlight. I'm also going to take just a teeny tiny bit and stick it under the brow bone just to make my brows look a little lifted. And this color is really subtle. It's nothing like nylon or anything like that. It's just a really subtle sheen. It's very natural looking. So I'm not going to do anything on the lower lash line. I'm just going to leave it bare because I want my eyes to look very open and awake. I am going to do a wing though, and I'm so excited to try this. This is the Maybelline Gel Liner. I might have tried this a while ago. I just, I honestly don't remember, but I have heard nothing but good things about this gel liner. I'm going to test it out. I mean, what the heck, right? I'm going to take this little tiny liner brush from Morphe. Oh, this is really nice and creamy. I have just been so stuck on my Inglot gel liner that I honestly haven't even like cared to venture out and try other gel liners. This is really nice though. It's super black. And I think it's drying matte. It looks that way so far. I have used the L'Oreal one before. The L'Oreal one was really nice. I remember it wasn't like as matte as I wanted it to be. Um, but I did use it for a really long time until I finally got my hands on the Inglot one. I want to say this was around $7. Which is not bad at all for a really nice gel liner. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous. I have been using this for like 10 plus years for as long as I can remember. This is my absolute favorite, favorite mascara ever. So I'm just going to do a nice little coat on my top lashes since I'm putting on false ones. For false lashes, I'm going to take the Eyelore and Vegas Nay ones in Grand Glamour. These are my 
absolute, like, hands down, my favorite lashes of all time. These are not in the box because I have already worn these, so they're already cut and shaped to my eye. I'm just going to take my Duo Lash Glue. This is in black. And lastly for lips, I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Mega Lash Liquid Catsuit Matte Liquid Lipstick. That is such a long name, but I absolutely love these. These are so good. This is in the color Give Me Mocha. I have never tried this color before. I have tried a couple of other ones. This one is new to me, and it kind of reminds me of Lolita from Kat Von D. This one was really hard to apply. I didn't show it on camera, but off camera, it took me like a good five minutes to try and even this out. It went on really patchy, which is weird because the other ones don't do that. I've used several of their colors and I've never had an issue with them. I've never had to layer it or kind of like build it up the way that I did with this one. So I don't know if it's just this color or if it's that I put on a chapstick underneath. My lips were really moisturized, but I always put on a chapstick under liquid lipsticks, so I'm not sure. I do like the color now that I have it on and it's built up, it is really pretty. Um, I actually really love this color a lot and I think it complements the eyeshadow really well. Um, it's a little sticky, so if you can see, when you kind of smack your lips together, it is very sticky. That is something I'm okay with. That doesn't really bother me too much. I, I like liquid lipsticks, and I'm okay with them being on the stickier side more than the drying side. So this is okay. They're very comfortable. It's a very thin kind of whipped consistency, if that makes sense. So um, it's starting to dry a little bit more and it's getting a little less sticky. So maybe it's just not dry enough because like I said, I did have to build up this color a lot because it did go on very patchy. But now that it's done, it is very beautiful and these are super inexpensive. I think these are like $3.99 at the drugstore and they always have these buy one get one half off at like Walgreens and CVS and you honestly can't go wrong. They look so beautiful and they last a really long time. That's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found some new drugstore makeup that you could try just like I did. A lot of the things that I used today, I had never tried. A lot of this was new for me, just as it might be for other people. So let me know in the comments below if there are other suggestions that you guys have so I can try. I always love trying new makeup, especially if it's drugstore, because What's better than buying makeup other than buying affordable makeup? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. What is this? Does this thing have a life of its own? What the fuck? Ah! I dropped my lash. This is in the... What is this? Where did it even come from, dude? Uh. Oh my god. If I could stop dropping shit, that would be great. <coughs> <coughs> could I be any more unattractive? You a stupid hoe. You, you a stupid hoe.